Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. There is no intro for this, there is no captain's log, there's a reason for that. No, I'm not ditching them. It's because I'm quite irritated by something that I find annoying enough that I'm going to get rid of all of this and I'm going to put on the screen relevant information that you need to see and I'll of course let you know when you need to. On the 8th of September, Queen Elizabeth II passed away. For a number of days before the 19th of September, her body lied in state. The reason why was because obviously preparations had to take place for the funeral itself. A once in a lifetime event and a last chance for the British people to say goodbye. Many people will say that they are anti-monarchy and that is quite alright. You can still be anti-monarchy and respect what someone did during their lifetime and there will undoubtedly be people who say, but what did they actually do for us? They cost the taxpayer roughly £8 each a year. Per year, they generate £2.5 billion at a cost of £500 million. That's not a bad turnaround. Their brand is worth over £90 billion. It is quite the lucrative brand. So perhaps instead of thinking about rather spending that on the PlayStation monthly subscription, accept that for the country's economy, an extra £2 billion a year is not a bad deal. That's for those who are anti-monarchy. Others, they like the idea of the constitutional monarchy. The process. Others just love the royal family, and that's quite all right. But there's an aspect of the lying in state I took issue with. For those who didn't see it, the queue was over 10 miles. Hundreds of thousands of people queued up like good British people, some of whom were pretending to be British, but doing it because they wanted to pay respect to the longest reigning monarch in this country's history. Queen Elizabeth II led by a certain example, and the people wanted to respect that. Over the years, I've grown quite fond of a phrase uttered by The Rock, blood, sweat, respect. You shed the first two and you earn the third. Queen Elizabeth had earned her third. She'd earned it for a lifetime of service that she had pledged long before she was even made queen. Yesterday was quite the solemn day for this nation, but something then had been gnawing at people. Something before had been gnawing at the people, and something after is gnawing at the people. And that concerns a few people, Two people who pretend to be journalists when they are anything but, and others being politicians, who are basically snakes in suits. Because some people were granted the ability while the Queen lied in state to jump that queue. Now many don't mind a queue, it is very much the British thing. We like to complain, we like to queue. Like the Americans, they like to sue everyone over the tiniest of microaggressions, and they like to latch onto the idea that words have no meaning, and therefore cancel you for using words that have lost all meaning. Because we like to queue, many of us were willing to wait for days, days, to say goodbye and to bow before our Queen. Many people were not so fortunate as to be able to go to see the Queen Elizabeth II before she was laid to rest either because they were in that queue and not able to get through in time, or because they were unable to attend. But for those who were able to attend and waited so long, it's quite something to see when you notice a video like this doing its rounds. In that video, you see two television presenters from the channel ITV. They are presenters of a show called This Morning. One, Holly Willer Booby, the other, Philip Scogopherfield. Behind them, you notice an exceptionally large queue. That queue is the 10 mile long queue waiting to show their respect to Queen Elizabeth II. They were granted the permission to jump an entire queue of hundreds of thousands of people to go and do that because apparently they're journalists. To me, they are journalists in the same sense that an elastic band is a bone, in the same sense that a AAA battery is a warp drive, in the same sense that a person's trainers do not smell after they've been to the gym. Others that did skip the queue included politicians, and I can't think of a single context why I think that's acceptable. You serve the people like the Queen did, therefore at no point should you be granted permission to appear better than them by appearing before them without experiencing what they experienced with them. It is a level of arrogance and entitlement that I find unacceptable. All over a queue, I know it seems petty, but again, I'm English. Quite proud of that part, by the way. Being proud to be English does mean that from time to time we do things together. And I can back this up. Politicians that did skip the queue include the deputy leader of the opposition, Angela Rayner. But people who didn't skip the queue would include the likes of Theresa May and David Beckham. Now, if you don't know who David Beckham or Theresa May are, I'm going to tell you who they are. David Beckham is a literal living legend for hair implants and flat caps. 
He also did a bit of football over the years and has shagged a skeleton on multiple occasions. Theresa May is this country's greatest export break dancer. She was also a prime minister for three years, and she didn't skip the queue. She could have, but she didn't. She gets a lot of crap for how she handled Brexit, but you can't fault her for this. Now, the way it worked was that accredited journalists who have access to the parliamentary estate are also able to bypass the queue to see the Queen by booking allocated time slots. This sounds like an incredible privilege granted to them. To us, the people, it is a huge overreach, because then we still don't know, we still do not know how Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby managed to get through. This has gotten so bad that Holly, Holly Willoughby, Philip Schofield, and this morning have been trending during and after the lying in state of Queen Elizabeth II. It almost overshadows because people are furious. So much so, a change.org petition has been started. At time of recording, it has close to 16,000 signatures. Granted, this will never achieve anything, because shows like This Morning have existed for a long time, just so you know what This Morning is. This Morning is a crappy morning show where they do gossip, cringy videos like this during COVID, cooking and fashion segments, along with random nonsense involving people in those crappy soap shows and occasionally sucking off a politician for views. Now, the program bosses had said in a statement on Instagram, because that's how you get the word out, that they had asked Philip and Holly to be part of a film for this Tuesday's programming, which is why the only thing we saw filming around there was a phone. They did not jump the queue, have VIP access, or file past the Queen lying in state, but instead were there in a professional capacity as part of the world's media to report on the event. First of all, you're not the world's media. You're a shitty gossip show mid-morning. And they did jump the queue, we saw them jump the queue, which meant they took advantage of the very privilege you had given them to jump a queue, which seems again like a small thing, and others will say it's quite morbid, but it's all a part of our very arcane process. It is what we as a nation do together. By skipping it, you jumped us. The entitlement is strong in this one. You know you done goofed when even fellow presenters on other programs say, yeah, no, you shouldn't have done that. Now, Holly and Philip have actually spoken up since this and began Tuesday's episode of this morning, so today, by addressing the accusations that they skipped the queue. Despite the bosses of this morning issuing a statement insisting they didn't skip ahead of the queue, well, no, they did. They spoke about the backlash, explaining the rules were that we would be quickly escorted around the edges to a platform at the back. In contrast, those paying their respects walked along a carpeted area beside the coffin and were given time to pause. None of the journalists and broadcasters there took anyone's place in the queue and no one filed past the Queen. Continuing, we, of course, respected those rules. However, we realised that it may have looked like something else and therefore totally understand the reaction. Please know we would never jump a queue. There is a minor issue with all that they had said within their non-apology, and it's that no other journalist had walked down the VIP line. You claim you were there to record something, but there has been no footage of anything released to the public. That and, well, the inside was being shown 24-7. If you wanted to watch it, Sky News and the BBC seem to have that locked down. So the very concept of what you are saying seems like a non-remark. You, Philip Schofield, and Holly Willoughby claim yourselves to be journalists, but you produce no content to confirm that or support it. You claim you were there to film something, we've got nothing. Do you believe you're doing some documentary special where you have some heartfelt remarks from MPs produced? It is believed by many that ITV's This Morning is a show that possesses a toxic culture. I couldn't care less about that. I do care that they, as a show, or many people involved in it, lead by example. There were many more MPs that did actually join the queue instead of skipping the queue, because they were given a certain number of spaces to skip the queue, and they chose not to in favour of giving them away because their own staff were not permitted to skip it either. Many people within that building, within the establishment of Westminster, were not permitted to do that because they were treated as second-class citizens. So what did many do? They queued up. They did the right thing. You did not. And as British people, you should be ashamed of yourselves.